If you ask anybody in America who created the automobile industry in America, they'll tell you it's Henry Ford. Uh, however, if you really look at the history of the automobile industry, it wasn't Henry Ford, it was activists who played a big role. The activists were the people who created automobile clubs, and in turn, they organized contests that made it easy for car companies to compete with one another and develop a reputation. Once concerns about quality were allayed, what the automobile clubs did was they spent a lot of time championing good roads. That's when Henry Ford realized with good roads and with the car accepted as a quality product, he could mass produce a car in 1912. So the interesting question is, why could he not have done that earlier? And the answer is he couldn't have done that earlier because it took that long for the activists and the hobbyists to play a role. If you fast forward 60, 70 years later, what happened with the electric car? What's making the electric car a reality are activists. Activists of two types. One is a group of energy activists. These are people who are against nuclear energy, who are against fossil fuels and the like. And what we show in the paper is the earlier an American city enacted a ban against nuclear energy, the more likely it is to create electric vehicle battery charging stations. What this tells us is there's a big legacy effect. The second thing the paper shows is legacies are great, but you need hobbyists too. And the paper shows that electric auto association chapter members who are hobbyists who tinker with the car are really the people who've made uh, electric vehicle battery charging stations possible. Just as roads were what limited the diffusion of the gas-powered automobile, battery charging stations is what limits the spread of the automobile. And this is where activists are playing a part, persuading cities, persuading local governmental authorities to actually establish them so that we move towards a fossil-free uh, source of energy uh, for vehicles. The third interesting finding of the paper is that in cities where chapters of hobbyists were established even before the commercial advent of the electric car, they are actually very fertile places for the spread of the new technology. And so if you really sum it up, the paper says it's not the invisible hand of the market that matters, it's the joined hands of activists that matter. The other thing that activists can also be is they can be lead users. They're, if you will, the beta testers for any new technology. So the more new uh, you know, uh, organizations you have of activists, the better off you are. Now, there is, however, a little bit of a challenge. What happens when you have one group of activists saying electric car, another group of activists saying biodiesel, another group of activists saying something else? And there, that's sort of where in a democracy you actually have competition between different groups and hopefully the better solution would emerge. Uh, and I think uh, uh, the other thing that activists do, in my view, and what governments can do is once you have activism, it becomes easy for government itself to be a consumer. Um, one of the interesting things is governments are big consumers. Um, in any country, uh, the fire department, uh, the war department, or the defense department, the postal service, these are all examples where the government can actually wield a huge influence on the outcome. 
But part of what governments may sometimes be very reluctant to do is to tip their hand early. The more activism there is around something, they quickly realize, hey, this actually fits in with popular aspirations uh, and uh, expectations. And so they might eventually find it more easy to become consumers. In that sense, you can think of governments being followers than leaders as consumers. So uh, making it easier for people to come together is, I think, where governments actually can play a big role. So that, to me, is the big policy implication.